yeah, there's all sorts of different terrors on board and uh, or in the story and that they're mostly psychological. Um, it's a lot to do with the idea of these people being sort of blundering into this environment that they really have no understanding of and no business really being there. And it, it sort of strips them down to all of their preconceptions about themselves get sort of ripped away. Crozier, that he seems to have this not that far below the surface resentment towards oh, deeply, yeah. towards uh, Franklin and, yeah. and that. I mean, is that, again, one of the reasons why you were sort of quite keen on the role? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it was really well written. Um, and it, he had a very clear idea of, of who this person was. He had a, a giant ship on his shoulder, shoulder as, you, as you mentioned, because he had been... Um, he, he sort of realised, having been... A um, he identified as being British, but they saw him as Irish, and that there was a limit to how far he could uh, succeed in in the uh, in the navy. He was the most experienced polar explorer, but he wasn't in charge, and they were never going to put him in charge. I was wondering about this. That's an interesting point you touched upon, like the, the nature of celebrity, because these these men would have been huge. They were the rock stars. Yeah, the 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 you know the Discovery Service was created. Uh, at the end of the Napoleonic War, because they had this massive navy, they didn't want to get rid of all of it, and they decided to sort of slice a third of it off and say, well, go and fill in all the unexplored areas of the map. So you're constantly reading stuff in the papers about new places that had been discovered, and it was all for the glory of the British Empire and expanding the British Empire through commerce. So um, so everyone shared in the success, and it was all for the you know the greater acclaim of the Queen and... Um, uh, and, and this particular voyage or this particular prize, the Northwest Passage, that was the ultimate one. The lives these guys have to leave, and because of the, the, the multiple threats they face, it is brutal. You see the seat, you see surgery, you see, sure. you see all that kind of thing. I mean, how would you have felt in this situation? Could, was, could you, did you picture yourself how coping in this particular situation? Yeah, I mean, you always had to think about that. How would you have dealt with the cold? How would you have dealt with the... I mean, the idea is that nobody would have returned from a voyage like this um, with all of your fingers and toes, and you, some of them people would lose ears and stuff like that from frostbite. You were definitely not going to come back whole, um, and you knew that it went once you said yes to the trip. I mean, and um, they, fi- they found the terror in 2016. Yeah. Um, Crozier's window's intact as is well, a, a, which is kind of incredible. But lo- lo- locals have been frightened of, or, or had, had, had sort of sensed bad spirits around sure. there. Do you think that's easy to understand, given that these men just vanished, the ships just vanished, these huge pieces of technology? Well, I mean, whether it was something malign or just incredible bad luck, uh, it's still not something that you, <laughs> you want to inherit, is it? Um, and, and, you know, I, I, over, the pe- uh, over a period of about 90 years, they did fill in quite a lot of the story and figure out um, what had happened to them. And, of course, our story has this genre element added to it. So there's a supernatural um, element that's added to the story from Dan Simmons' book.